And you know that's very evident that the Lord is speaking to us this morning. And I want to continue building on that because we need to build with the Lord. And what I really believe that the Lord is challenging us with this morning is that we need faith to serve Him. We cannot serve the Lord without faith. There's so much heartache around us, so many broken relationships, so many difficult circumstances that we all go through and people go through. And you know, life is not just an easy road. All all of us are challenged in our lives in some particular way, whether we're going through health issues, going through relationship issues, we've lost a job, maybe there's someone that we love that's backslidden and gone away from the Lord, we've struggled in our own homes and with our own families, but all of us go through struggles, it's part of life. But in the midst of that, we need faith, because when we have faith in our hearts, it enables us to continue to serve the Lord. And faith doesn't come from anywhere else but from the Lord. In fact, Hebrews chapter 2, it says, He is the author and perfecter of our faith. That, that's where faith comes from. It doesn't come from any man. It doesn't come from a radio station. It doesn't come from how the economy is working. It comes from the Lord Himself. Amen. And that's what we need to realize, that the Lord wants to put faith in our hearts every day. Because he knows what faith can do to you. Because it enables you to see beyond what you see with your natural eyes and to have a faith and a hope that God is able. And nothing is impossible for him. But where do do we receive faith? Where does it come from? We We know we've read that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. But what simple instrument does he use to put faith in your heart and in my heart? And I want us to start reading from Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is where faith comes from. It doesn't come from man's words, man's wisdom, man's ideas, man's opinions. Man will always have his own opinions. Man will always have his own words. Man will always have his own methods and techniques and whatever he wants. But at the end of the day, true faith in my life comes from one place, the word of the Lord. The word that I read in the Bible, the word that comes to me in any way the Lord wants to bring it to me, whether it's through the gifts of the Spirit, whether it's through someone encouraging me by email or text or whatever. But when the word of the Lord comes to my life, it builds me and puts faith in my heart to face what I'm facing. And that's why Jesus said, every day you need my word. He said, man can't live on your bread alone. You can't just survive on your eating and your drinking and your coming and your going and your working and everything that goes along with life. But there's a heart that the Lord wants us to carry where we are hungry for His Word. We're hungry to hear one timely word from God that can put faith in your heart that no man could put faith in. And that brings hope to a hopeless situation. That brings encouragement to something that looks so discouraging. But in the midst of that, the Lord puts a word of encouragement in your heart that nothing's impossible for Him and whatever He chooses, whatever instrument He chooses. But when the word of the Lord comes to us, it puts faith where there's been no faith. It puts puts a, a hope in my heart where there's been no hope. And that's what should happen when we come to church. Because if we're not meeting with the Lord, if the word of the Lord is not putting faith in our heart, something's wrong. Because the Word of God is His tool that He uses to put faith back in our lives. And that's why I need the Word of the Lord every day. Because you and I know how easy it is to be anxious, to be worried, to be insecure, to be fearful. And it's not an indictment to be insecure. It's not an indictment on you to be afraid or to be panicking and worrying in certain situations. But in the midst of that, we need the Word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord comes and puts faith back in my heart when I've given up on myself and I read a scripture that says, I've started a good work in you. I'll bring it to completion. Oh, Lord, I've got faith for my life again. 
Because the Lord put faith back in my heart. He put His Word back in my heart. Just when I think, Lord, I've blown it again and again and again and again. Lord, I'm a condemned person. I'm a wretched person. There's no hope for me. And I read a scripture like Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It says, therefore in Christ Jesus there is no condemnation for the people of God. In fact, if I confess my sin, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, I confess my sin, I repent before the Lord. He's faithful and He's just to forgive my sin and to purify me from all unrighteousness. That I can have faith in my heart that, that Lord, it's okay, I've blown it, but I can go forward again. But when I'm condemned, I have no faith for my life. And I need the Lord. I mean, condemnation is knocking at the door of your heart every day. Every day. And let me tell you, that is the tool of the devil himself to condemn you. And Jesus didn't die on the cross to condemn his people. He died on the cross to open a door for us to find his love, to find his forgiveness, to find his grace, to find his mercy, to find that forgiveness of the Lord and take it in faith and say, thank you, Lord, I'm moving on. But you and I know that that condemnation is a reality. Knocks at the door of my life every day. And, you know, my weak areas is when you, you know, you've asked the Lord to forgive you of a certain area and it just keeps raising its ugly head. You think, Lord, when is this going to stop? Surely your forgiveness is going to run out somewhere. Do you ever feel like that sometimes? Lord, I can't keep coming to you with the same issue. But I can keep coming to Him. When I read the Scriptures, when I've just read what I've read to you, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, and Psalm 32, when David came, confessed his sin to the Lord, brought his sin into the light, and the Bible says the Lord forgave him the guilt of his sin. Hallelujah for that. That means I can look forward. That means I can have faith for my life. Yes, I've blown it. Yes, I've done things that I regret doing. I've said things that I've regretted. But in the midst of that, I found the word of the Lord. That's put faith back in my heart for my life. But there's a specific area that the Lord has laid on my heart for all of us here today where we've lacked faith. And it's an area that I think has subtly crept into our lives where we've lacked faith in our prayer life. And I believe with all of my heart that the Lord wants to build a faith back in your prayer life. And the only way that that faith can come back in your prayer life is one way, when we look at the scriptures this morning about the power of of prayer. And I want to start reading 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And we're going to take it very slowly with a few scriptures. We're not going to read many, but I want to be very slow to catch the spirit of what we're going to be reading today. Chapter 5, verse 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. This is the confidence that we have in Him, in Jesus Himself. That if we ask anything according to His will, He what? He hears us. So that's the first encouragement, that if we're asking anything according to His will, He hears us. And it's very obvious what's in His will and what's not in His will. To exchange your wife for another wife cannot be in His will. You understand what I'm saying? So God can't answer that prayer when you fit up with your wife and you want to exchange her for a new model. He cannot answer that prayer. He cannot answer a prayer when you're going to the gym as a young man or any other woman going to the gym, whether you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s, and you see someone that is physically attracted to you, and you like him, and he's a good man, and he's a well-natured man, or a good woman, or has a real wonderful heart, but he's not serving Jesus, and nor is she. And now you're asking God that, can you marry him? He can't hear that prayer. Because the Lord is not going to ask you to, 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 to marry someone. He's not going to allow you or hear your prayer, that's a prayer in the flesh. But he'll hear your prayer and say, Lord, I want to marry the woman that you're going to bring into my life. I want to marry the husband that you're going to bring into my life. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't want just someone that's good looking. But if you want someone that's good looking and you're asking God for that, he doesn't hear that prayer. Because that prayer is not in his will. So we need to be clear. There are prayers that we are asking God that are not in His will and He can't hear us. But prayers that are biblical, that are sound on the foundation 
that we pray in faith He hears those prayers. My son is backslidden. Lord, bring him back to you. That's a prayer he is. That one's struggling, Lord. My own children are struggling. There's situations that are, are difficult. Lord, please bring repair. That relationship is broken down. It's hurtful. Lord, I, I can't help. Um, Lord, I, I want to see this relationship healed and restored. But Lord, please do the work. And you know what? He hears that prayer. Because he's the restorer of broken walls. Nothing is beyond him. No relationship is beyond him. No person is beyond him. Thank God we heard that testimony this morning. Someone prayed for that man probably 10 years ago or 5 years ago. But that prayer was heard. That prayer was in the will of the Lord. And one day the grace of God appears to this man and saves him. And thank God he's been baptized today. Hallelujah for that. Isn't that incredible? So he hears us when it's in his will. And if we know that he hears us, this is encouraging for me. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. In other words, he not only just hears us, but there is coming a day, a day which the Lord chooses, not you, not me, where the Lord will answer your prayer. That's incredible. Your prayer in the will of the Lord. Do, you, do, do we know that the Lord has a heart to reach people? He has a heart to save people. He has a heart to heal people. He has a heart to do things that we could never do. But when we pray in the will of the Lord, in faith, Lord, repair this. Help the situation, Lord. Do a miracle here, Lord. And it's in line with His will. We can be assured there will come a day where God will answer that prayer. It may not be what the timing you want and the way you want. But God will answer that prayer. My mother is now with the Lord. But I want to tell you, she had one thing on her heart from the day that she gave her life to the Lord and to the day that she died, was that she had a heart to, to tell people about Jesus. And what broke her heart was when my, my sister married an ungodly man. When I say that, he didn't know the Lord. And he was an atheist. He's absolutely a professed atheist. My sister had grown up in the church. She was born again. She was leading praise and worship. She loved the Lord. There was an anointing on her life to lead people in praise and worship. And she just took a detour and ran away from the Lord and married a man. She still married him today. But my mother, in her heart, prayed and said, Lord, you can bring this man to you. Whatever means, whatever tool, you can do it, Lord. And you know, my mother died, and things have happened in their, in their own family. Um, my, my sister's son gave his heart to the Lord, and my mother led him to the Lord and got him a Bible. And he, and he used to hide his Bible underneath his pillow, so no one would see his Bible. But when my mother died, each one of those children testified how the Lord had met them and spoken to them through my mom's life. And listening in that meeting was the husband of my sister, who was the professed atheist, listening to his own children, testifying to the, to, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. She never saw her son-in-law come to the Lord. But I want to tell you, she died in faith, believing that God heard her cry. And I believe with all my heart that when you ask the Lord, and it's in his plan and in his will, whether you live to see it or you don't live to see it, God will answer your prayer one day. And I believe that I may be the one that will enjoy the fruit of that prayer. She's prayed for her son-in-law. And I can rem remind myself that those prayers that my mom, even though she's with the Lord today, brought before the Lord, comes up as a remembrance before Him. And I want to prove that in a beautiful uh, chapter later. Just, just, but before we go there, I want to read another scripture from James to encourage you how powerful your prayer is. I think prayer has become religious and it's lost its power. I think we just prayed and, you know, but I believe the Lord wants to put a new faith in our prayer life, knowing that what we pray in the will of God, He hears, and not only is He hearing, but there will come a day where the Lord will answer that prayer. Look here in um, James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man 
is the, in the NIV translation, I like it better than this translation. It says avails much. In the NIV it says is powerful and effective. I love that translation. So the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. When a righteous man opens his heart and opens his mouth in prayer to his God, let me tell you, that prayer is powerful and effective. And he says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He was just a normal human being like you and I. But he was a righteous man. You are a righteous man because of the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed you and washed you. Being declared the righteousness of God in Christ. That prayer life that we have is powerful and it's effective. He was a man just like you and I. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Now, that prayer was right in line with the will of the Lord. I mean, you know, if you decide today, Lord, stop every bit of rain here in Sarasota, Florida. Don't think the Lord's going to listen to that type of prayer. That's a prayer in the flesh. He won't answer that prayer. This was part of the plan. When you read what happened with Elijah and the king and Ahab, how God was going to use this as a testimony to the glory of God. When he told uh, Elijah, the Lord spoke to Elijah and said, listen, just the rain's coming. Go present yourself to Ahab and tell him the rain is coming. Well, unfortunately, the rain didn't come then. It came three years later, whenever the Lord decided it to come. And he had to wait in a drought, in a severe famine, to wait until the timing of God. And when the timing of God came, the rain came. A miracle of God. And Ahab had to recognize this was God. And that was the point of it. So we don't just start claiming things. And, you know, we're the man of the hour now and the woman of the hour. Stop the rain. Let me tell you, the Lord doesn't listen to that. That's just arrogance. Stop this, stop that. You're the big man now. No. You, you need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord. What's in His plan? What's in His will? What's in the Word of God? And you pray in line with that. The Lord hears it. And now we know there will come a day where the answer will come. And He prayed again in verse 18. And the, and the heaven gave rain, gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. You know, when I was before the Lord this morning, I just said, Lord, honestly, when I woke up, I said, Lord, I haven't a clue today. A lot has happened this week. You know what? We've, we've been in a lot of meetings, finishing a seminar with the couples yesterday. I've had no time to breathe, to be honest with you, and to think about meetings. I woke up this morning, and it was fearing, panicking in my heart, and saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. I feel like running away. I said, Lord, what's on your heart for the people, and what's on your heart for me? And the Lord started to speak to me in my heart about bringing back a faith in our prayer life again. And he reminded me this morning of an email that I received, and I want to read uh, a portion of it. Because in our prayer meetings on Tuesday, we've been praying for sp specific ladies that have been going through a great physical trial. One of the ladies by the name of Hetty that has had cancer and uh, been going through... Um, chemo, and we've been praying and trusting the Lord for a miracle. And this is the letter that she wrote to all those all over the world that have been praying for her, and I want to read it to you. I saw my surgeon yesterday after having finished 12, 12 long weeks of chemo. The wonderful news is that the results of the MRI and the ultrasound show that the tumor has completely disappeared. Thank you, Jesus, she says. I will still have to undergo surgery to remove the clip or marker they put in as a start, as well as surrounding tissue, to be sure the area <clears throat> where the tumor was cleared. We continue to trust the Lord for further good results <clears throat> excuse me, after surgery. So we rejoice as we know that Jesus is the one who made the chemo have such a complete effect. For, she says, for the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. Thank you so much for all your prayers and support, which are tangible and a source of no enormous strength. Glory to Jesus for all he has done and all he will do. Lots of love, Hetty. Wow. That's a miracle. Yeah. But that is an answer of prayer. And the very scripture that the Lord put on my heart this morning, he reminded me of that mail that we received during the week, how the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And when we pray, we can have a faith in God that not only does He hear us, but there will come a day where the Lord will answer our prayer. And just to wind up, I wanted to just go to Acts chapter 10, which is a very, it's a very sweet story of a man that loved the Lord. I don't think he really expected what was going to, to happen. 
His name was Cornelius. There was a certain man in Caesarea, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. His name was Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. He was a devout man, one who feared God and all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clear in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. In Acts chapter 30, um, further on, 10 verse 31, and he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. Now, we have to ask ourselves, if you read the story here, what was Cornelius praying to the Lord about? Because it, it, it doesn't tell you what he was praying directly, but indirectly, he was praying for the Lord to speak to the nation of Israel. Because what happens is that the Lord begins to minister to a man who we know is the name of Peter, and begin to prepare him to meet Cornelius, and to give him the good news about what Jesus did on the cross. But what the Lord shows Peter is that there's these, uh, let's just pick up the story. It's, it's easy for you to just see it with yourself. L look here in verse 9. The next day as they went on their journey and drew near to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let it down to earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. And then you go to verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth when he's preaching the gospel. In truth, I perceive that God shows not, no partiality because the Lord was revealing to the heart of Peter that the Jew and the Gentile both had a place in the kingdom through what Jesus had done on the cross. And Cornelius had been praying, Lord, speak to us. And the Lord arranges it miraculously for Peter himself to see this dream, or he was in a trance, see this revelation from God that the Lord had a plan for the Jew and the Greek. There was no division anymore. There was not one nation that was the nation of God. But under the new covenant, because of what Jesus did with his blood on the cross, the two have become one. And now they were preaching the gospel and setting the guys free that were in their Jewish tradition and believed that only the Jews could benefit from the kingdom. But God opens their eyes to see that there's no Jew, there's no Greek. There's no nation, but there's one nation, one people, a people that belong to the Lord. And you know what, brothers and sisters? We can pray the same prayer. Lord, speak to me. Speak to the church. God hears that prayer. Because I want to tell you, we are living in a day, brothers and sisters, where the church needs to hear the voice of God. Not the voice of man. They need to hear the voice of the Spirit. Today, if you hear the Holy Spirit, do not harden your hearts. That's what the Scripture says. But yield to the voice of the Lord. And that's what we are living in. We are living in days. In the church, God wants to bring back His voice. God wants to bring back true faith in the church. That's got nothing to do with methods of men and humanism and man's wisdom. He wants to bring the faith that's the real faith. That's the faith from the Lord. And the gospel brings that faith in your heart. That no man can boast about that. You have the faith to pray for someone. That faith came from the Lord. To God be the glory. Unfortunately today, everyone that prays and the Lord uses them, now it's all about their healing ministry. It's not about their healing ministry. 
God put a faith in their heart. And what they're doing now is they're abusing the faith that the Lord has given them to pray for the sick. Because God gives us a faith because He loves His people. And God can use anyone to heal anyone. And that doesn't put a stamp of approval on anyone's life just because the Lord used him or used her. God has a heart that's beyond our hearts. God releases a grace that's beyond our natural mind. But there are people that have been drunk that God has used. Now that might shock you. And the only reason why he's used them is because he sees his people. But it doesn't put a stamp of approval on the man that's standing behind the pulpit that's drunk a few beers before preaching the gospel. It doesn't put a stamp of approval on him. It doesn't put a stamp of approval on anyone that's on that foundation preaching the gospel. But I want to tell you, there's a real faith that God gives us that honors one person, Jesus Christ. And it's important that we don't see the Lord using someone and that that brings an approval that God's in this. Let me tell you, it doesn't work that way. It might confuse you. Do you know there's one scripture that says, the gifts and callings of God are what? Irrevocable, Irrevocable or without repentance. So, what can we argue with that? But we want to discern that what we are hearing and you need to have that discernment. You need to have that discernment week after week, meeting after meeting, that you're in church and you're hearing the voice of the Lord. You're not hearing my voice, not good ideas. You need to discern. And if it's not the voice of the Lord, then I'm in trouble. Pray for me. Because I can't just wake up on a Sunday morning and the Lord knew I was going to wake up with nothing. He knew that I was going to wake up saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. But he knew in my heart that I said, Lord, as I stand before your people, I'm not coming with some old uh, uh, meeting that I'm dug digging out of the trash bin. I'm, I want to come with something from you, Lord. I don't want to pull someone else's book and start quoting scriptures from someone else. I want to know that what's coming out of my mouth is the word of the Lord for the church. Amen. And when we have that fear of God in our lives, when we realize that the only faith that comes to God's people has to only come through one source, the word of the Lord. And that's why I believe the Lord today desires with all of His heart to put back faith in your prayer life. To realize one thing, that when you pray in the will of the Lord, He's heard your prayer. And guaranteed, there will come a day, Jesus will do the miracle. The miracle that we heard this morning. The miracle in your son. The miracle in your grandmother. The miracle in people's lives. The miracle in a relationship. He is the restorer of broken walls. Nothing is impossible for him. I am unmoved, brothers and sisters. I know in this room today there are tough situations. I am unmoved. And the reason why I'm unmoved is because I have a faith in my heart that God is able. I'm not going to look with my natural eyes at your life. I'm not going to look at my, with my natural eyes, and yet I see, as you see, people that are struggling, people that are going through hardship. I don't look at that like that. I know what's happening naturally, but there's someone bigger than that Amen. that can do a miracle. Amen. And I'm not changing my focus because of what I see in the natural. I want to stay to, 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 to the faith that God gives me every day to serve Him in the church. And I've got faith, honestly, from the Lord for this church. I don't care if five people are here next week. I don't care if no one comes to any meeting in the next five weeks. I'm going nowhere. We are trusting God that in this city of Sarasota, a voice can come, whether it's from there or there or there or there. We pray for that. Let the voice of the Lord be heard in the church. Let every man come to the foundation of Jesus Christ. Let every man come to realize he's nothing without the Lord. Let every man or preacher or woman that's involved in ministry realize that apart from the Lord, we can do nothing. Apart from the faith of the Lord, we have no faith. It's a serious time. But there's a remnant, I believe, that are ready for the true faith of the Lord. And to come back to a true faith in our prayer life, where we're not just praying, you know, in a, in a light, religious way, because we've all been there, done that. You know what I'm talking about. But faith comes back to our prayer life where we realize, Lord, I know this is in your will for my son to come back to you. I know it's in your will for you to prepare the right man for my life. I know it's in your will, Lord, for me to release this relationship because it's not good for me. Bad company corrupts good character. 
You want to serve the Lord and you're surrounding yourself with bad company? Yeah, they need the Lord, but you need the Lord first. You can't help them because you're drowning in the same pool. So you get out and serve Jesus and your friends. Let me tell you, you'll open a door for them. When they feel a faith in your heart for your life that's been broken and messed up in the world, but now there's a repair of the Lord going on in your life. Let me tell you, that's what opens the door for your friends. Not trying to compromise your life and just keep their, keep their friendship in the flesh. That doesn't work. My room was, that I lived at university was next to the bar. We, bought, we built the bar. We beautiful, built a beautiful counter and everything. When I got born again, I still came back to my room next to the bar. And as I opened the door, coming back full of faith, serving Jesus, the first people that I meet is all my bar warriors all ready to give me a beer. Let's go for it. I said, no, I don't want a beer. Said, what? I, I just don't desire to have a beer. I to, and I said to them clearly, it's good to see you guys. I'll be with you. I'll hang around with you. But I don't desire a beer. What do you want? I said, just give me a Coke. I'm all right with that. They were absolutely looking at me like I'd gone mad. The amazing thing about it is that the very one that, you know, I'd, I'd go and talk to and say, you know, and listen, this is what's happened in my life. And, and uh, he would kind of look at me. You know, they're looking at you a bit suspicious. But I had a faith in my heart from those t days that the Lord could touch this man. And uh, this man is preaching the gospel today. He was in there. He had no desire to serve the Lord. He was just so locked into his studies. But the good news is that he's serving Jesus today. And the people that the Lord has touched through your life as you're serving Jesus. It doesn't happen any other way. And that's why I've got faith for people because I know that God is able. And if God decides to use me and use you, then that's wonderful. But he can't use you on that foundation. He uses you when they can see there's a seriousness in your life to serve the Lord. That's what opens the door. So it's a new day. And I believe with all my heart when we stand, if you wouldn't mind standing with me, I believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that God wants to put a faith in your heart right now. Because He brought the Word to you. And already as you're sitting there, I'm sure faith is coming to your heart. And you're going to leave here, and you're going to see the same situation you're going to see the same person. You're going to see the same broken down relationship. And you're going to see many things with your natural eyes. But the Lord's going to remind you of what you heard today. You prayed in your heart in faith that, Lord, you are able. And he's able. And then when God does the miracle, we would love to hear about that. We would love to hear about that. Because that testimony will encourage people next week in church. And that testimony will encourage people six months' time in church when they prayed about something that we heard about this morning, and it was tough to watch that and see that and struggle with that, but yet there came a day where the Lord answered our prayer. Brenda and I went through agony as a hu husband and wife, mom and dad. Our eldest son and our eldest daughter were both on a wayward mission. We knew deep down in their heart they loved the Lord. My daughter was about to get into a relationship with a, with a, a man that had no desire to serve the Lord, believe me. My son was, was, was hanging around with a gang, you know, the whole gang move. And uh, I thought, what on earth have I raised you? But that was him. And started to wear dresses like a, uh, dress like a gangster and uh, talk like a gangster and, and want a pit bull and all the rest of it. And I thought, what do you want a pit bull for? <laughs> then he went to Cadillac. What do you want a Cadillac for? <laughs> because now that fits into the pit bull image and all the rest of it. And oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> but that's where he was. What could I do? What could Brenda do? All we could do is pray and say, Lord, we are helpless here. What have I done wrong? I've done everything that I could possibly do as a father, a, a mother, and, and I'm sure you've done the same. But it's not working according to your plan. But today I see my son in the church serving Jesus with his wife, giving his life to the Lord. All of our kids with us in the church in Durban, with us in the church, and they are serving Jesus today. Married to the right people. The Lord stopped relationships that he needed to stop. Closed the door on a guy that was, had no clue, had no desire to serve the Lord with my daughter. His only desire was to get married and then we're going to do what we want to do. But the Lord was bigger than that. 
and he's bigger than your son and he's bigger than your daughter and he's bigger than what you see with your natural eyes and he's bigger than your broken relationship because we serve a powerful, mighty God where nothing is impossible for him. And this is the day I believe with all my heart, brothers and sisters, that the Lord wants you to walk out of this building today with a faith from him. And I'm going to pray for that, with a faith from him, knowing deep down in your heart, yes, you'll be tested this afternoon. You'll be tested on Wednesday. You'll be tested tomorrow. But the word of the Lord will come back to you. That's why Paul says, God, the deposit that you've heard. Don't just walk out of here and let the birds of the air and everything else just steal a, steal a precious deposit of the, of the Lord. Guard it. Amen. Lord, this is a test for me now. But I want to keep the deposit. Keep, keep, keep putting that faith in my heart that this is going to be something you will do, not me. So I'm going to pray for you with all of my heart and trust the Lord. Lord, how we need faith today. Without faith, Lord, it's impossible to please you anyway. But Lord, you are the author and perfecter of our faith. Faith comes from you, Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. That's why today, Lord, we can have faith. Knowing that the word of the Lord brings faith in our hearts. Knowing that when we read the scriptures and we pray in line with your will. For that prodigal son, Lord, to come home. Lord, we know it's in line with your will. There's a day, Lord, you can bring those people to their senses. There's a day, Lord, where you can bring a repair that no man could bring. You are the repair of broken walls, Lord. Put a faith, Lord, in the heart of your church today for every situation that individually they are facing. Everyone's different, Lord. But you know every heart, you know every person, you know, you know every need. But let the word of the Lord come Loudly in each heart today, Lord, and revive them and put a new faith. Put a new faith, Lord, that you are able. You are able. That prayer, Lord, is powerful and effective. There will come a day, Lord, not only have you heard, but there will come a day where we will rejoice together in answered prayer. And we will thank you, Lord. In, we will thank you, Lord, that you are a God that is faithful and good. And, Lord, nothing is beyond you. So encourage this church this today, Lord. Even, even for those that have looked at this church in the natural, what can happen to this church? Lord, open our spiritual eyes to see that this small church can be a small beginning for many, many people's lives. As the gospel leaves this place, as they go with the gospel in their lives, as there's a genuineness and sincerity to serve you, Lord, not perfect, imperfect like I am, but, Lord, something in us that people say, these people have been with Jesus. So, Lord, have your way. And, Lord, it's not our way. It's not our time. We don't want to start demanding when it should be done. and when it, Lord, it's your way, your time. But we know today, Lord, there will come a day. Thank you, Lord. Today, encourage your church. Encourage your church. Put a faith in every single heart today. Yes. As they leave here today, the gospel will never leave them. What they have heard from you today, Lord, will mark them for life. So thank you, Lord. You are a God that knows our every need. You, know, you knew our need today. And everyone else that's listening, those on live stream, and there are those listening on live stream, and I believe the Lord wants to encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, you've, you've Locked into the meeting, you never knew what to expect, whether you're in Mauritius, whether you're in, in Africa somewhere, wherever you are, whether you're in San Diego. I know there's people that watch from San Diego. Uh, Lord, just minister to them. Encourage them, Lord. They need the gospel today. They're going through many things. But Lord, today revive them. Put a new faith in their heart. Everyone that will listen to this meeting, Lord, whether it's on the website or whenever that is, but Lord, today minister to your people. Yeah. In your precious name, amen. Amen, guys.